Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. My name is Olivera Savic. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Cognitive Development Lab at the Ohio State, and I will talk about the drivers of semantic organization development. This work is done in collaboration with Laila Anger and Vladimir Slutsky. Semantic knowledge is fundamental to nearly all aspects of human cognition. It allows us to understand how to interact with objects in our environment, it supports language, it can even support our prediction of future, as it allows for uh, generalization from familiar to novel items and situations. What is the critical property that allows for these and many other intelligent feats is the organization of semantic knowledge. Human semantic knowledge functions as an organized lexico-semantic network in which concepts denoted by words are linked based on their meaning. Although this organization is critical for everyday functioning, we are not born with an organized lexico-semantic network. Instead, it needs to be developed somehow through our experience. The goal of the present research is to understand which aspects of our experience drive organization development and how. To understand semantic knowledge, we need to look into two critical types of semantic links, associative and taxonomic links. Associative links connect items that are frequently observed together or in language can be combined to express meaningful utterances. For example, apple and juicy or apple and tree, apple and eat are associatively related. On the other hand, uh, apple is also related to concepts such as pear, quince, and strawberry, and it's connected to these concepts by taxonomic links that link items that are similar in meaning, that share some important features, or typically belong to, some, to the same semantic category. As I previously said, both of these uh, types of links are critical for everyday functioning, and I'm here give just some examples. Associative links support our use of language that goes beyond the comprehension of individual words. For example, we can understand that I'd like a juicy apple, communicate something about eating apples, although eating was never mentioned. This is possible because concepts juicy and apple are associatively related to the concept of eating. On the other hand, taxonomic links support one of the critical aspects of our intelligent behavior and that's generalization. Based on taxonomic links, we can conclude that if apples are healthy, twins may also be healthy. These two types of semantic links have different developmental trajectories, with associative links emerging early in development and being present throughout development, and taxonomic links starting to emerge between the age of four and six and having protracted development becoming robust only later in childhood and adulthood. The critical question in cognitive development and of this research is to understand where the associative and taxonomic links come from. Traditionally, uh, associative and taxonomic links have been assumed to have separate origins, with associative links stemming from the observance of cochrane and taxonomic links stemming from observance of shared features between items. And although these assumptions are valid and supported by previous research, they do not offer a coherent image of semantic development as they form a kind of disconnect between the early merging associative organization and the later developing taxonomic organization that supplements the associative network. In the current research, therefore, we investigate an alternative explanation for the semantic development, the one that offers a more coherent image and assumes or proposes that both associative and taxonomic links can stem from the same origin. In this case, the simple Cochrane's regularities of word use in language. Words occur in language in predictable ways and Cochrane's accounts predicts that these kinds of regularities, the regularities with which words directly occur in language, can form associative links between concepts such as juicy and apple or juicy and pear. On the other hand, these kinds of regularities can further support formation of taxonomic links between the concepts that do not necessarily directly occur, but share each other's patterns of concurrence, such as apple and pear both being preceded by the word juicy. 
We now know that language input, including the language input to young children, is abundant with these kinds of regularities that could, in principle, support the critical types of semantic links. However, this is not enough to claim that these kinds of regularities do foster semantic organization. In addition, it is important to demonstrate that humans have abilities that they are sensitive to these kinds of regularities and that they can learn from them. In addition, we also want to know when do these abilities to learn from co-occurrence regularities develop. To investigate this question, we recruited four-year-old children and adults and looked at their ability to form novel semantic links from co-occurrence regularities in language. It is important also to say that Cochrane's account can explain changes in semantic organization. We already said that associative and taxonomic links have different developmental trajectories with taxonomic links developing later. Taxonomic links are supported by shared Cochrane's regularities based on Cochrane's account. And based on mere pure experiential uh, uh, assumption, uh, we could explain this trajectory um, because it is possible that due to the dependence of shared Cochrane's links and direct Cochrane's links that need to be formed first, shared Cochrane's links emerge later because we need to accumulate enough statistics to derive shared from direct Cochrane's. It is, however, also possible that only the ability to form uh, direct Cochrane's links emerges early, while ability to form shared Cochrane's links because it has additional challenge of integrating direct Cochrane's episodes um, of experience may uh, have a protracted development. Finally, it is possible that both abilities to form direct and shared Cochrane's regularities develop. And this is what we will test in the next set of experiments. In order to test whether participants of different ages are able to form semantic links based on direct Cochrane's, we expose them to linguistic input that is rich in these kinds of regularities. In this input, novel words both directly co-occurred or shared Cochrane's with some familiar words. For example, participants would hear sentences such as, I'd like nice Fubli apple, and based on these regularity, they could form link between the Fubli and apple. Based on the regularity in the second sentence, they could form regularity between Fubli and MIP, which building on these two types of regularities could result in forming the shared Cochrane's link between the words apple and MIP that share their Cochrane's with the word Fubli. In the set of experiments I will present today, we used two sets of two triads of words. The horse triad, where the familiar word was horse and novel words dodish and gek, and apple triad, in which the familiar word was apple and novel words were fubli and nip. The logic behind the irregularities in these triads was the same. The experiment had uh, three phases. Um, in the training, participants were exposed to sentences that contain these uh, direct and shared Cochrane's regularities. And importantly, these sentences were unique, the sentence frame, so they could not inform participants in other way about the relationship between the words. Participants, uh, so 10 sentences per pair of words, dodge horse, fubli apple, fubli mip, and dodge gek. And uh, were later uh, asked to use these words that they learn in a sentence completion task, which was designed to measure formation of direct and shared links. In the sentence completion task, participants were asked to complete sentences such as, I'd like a nice foobly, and they could respond apple or mip if they learned anything from training, or sentences such as, I'd like a nice mip, where they could respond with the words foobly or apple. Sentence completion, therefore, measured both formation of direct and shared Cochrane's links. In the label extension task, we presented participants with images of mammals and fruits and asked them to label them with one of the novel words, mip or gag, that shared Cochrane's with familiar words from the family of fruits, apple, or mammals, horses. The logic behind this experiment is that if participants form link between apple and mip, they should be able to generalize this link to other fruits. Therefore, the label extension task was uh, made to measure uh, generalization based on shared links. Here are the results. 
We found that both children and adults are sensitive to direct car occurrence links and they can use them in a production task. Here on this graph, the chance level is zero, so both children and adults are above chance. And in addition to uh, the both being about chance, we also recorded important developmental differences uh, with adults performing better than children. On the other hand, although they could form direct Cochrane's links and rely on them, there was very uh, small proportion of responses that participants show uh, that showed reliance on shared Cochrane's links. Although, uh, remember that in sentence completion tasks, participants were not forced to rely on shared links, and it is expected that shared links are weaker than direct Cochrane's links. The critical um, evidence for participants' ability to rely on shared Cochrane's links come from label extension tasks, where they were forced to rely on these kinds of links. And in this task, we got striking developmental differences, with majority of adults performing well, being able to rely on share newly formed shared Cochrane's links to perform generalization, and majority of children failed. Although this is an interesting pattern, we wanted to check whether this developmental differences may be simply due to participants in attention in younger group. So we performed an additional experiment in which we gave participants extended training and tripled the training of uh, the experiment one and uh, we measured their performance in same task sentence completion label extension. We found that truly participants did benefit from this extended training and both and children and adults showed that, that they can rely on direct Cochrane's links, and these links were much stronger than experiment one. And again, we found developmental differences. However, importantly, in addition, although children in experiment two with extended training show the same strength of direct Cochrane's links as adults in experiment one, they again failed to rely to build on these links to form shared Cochrane's links. Additional small piece of information from these pattern results come from the regression analysis that shows that ability to form direct links not only develops, but it can predict ability to form shared links beyond age. To summarize, um, in this set of experiments, we have shown that exposure to Cochrane's regularities foster formation of novel semantic links in both children and adults, and that abilities to form both direct and shared links undergo development. Back to our explanation of the changes in the organization uh, in accordance to associative and taxonomic links, these results can help us explain these changes by suggesting that associative links emerge early because they rely on early emerging abilities to form direct Cochrane's links. In addition, taxonomic links may emerge gradually because they depend on the initial development of direct links, and they, uh, we found that the ability to integrate direct Cochrane's uh, episodes also develops. In addition, a very important one more thing to take out from uh, this lecture is that associative and taxonomic links are interdependent and the early emerging associative links can support later gradual emergence of taxonomic links. That is all, thank you. I would like to invite you to ask questions and if there is not enough time, please email me. I'm looking forward to your emails. Thank you.